so uh, the question I have is uh, Matt, uh, how do we differentiate what can you give some insights on uh, Google bot which crawls the organic and the ad part yeah um, that's a great question so uh, Think about it like this. We have a large number of machines who can go out and fetch content. Mm -hmm. And you always want to advertise <clears throat> accurately what you are, whether you're fetching on behalf of, of the index or whether you're, you know, ad spot and you're fetching on behalf of that. Um, so usually it's safe to think of those as separate mechanisms. So okay. Googlebot will fetch pages. They might have their own IP range. AdSpot will fetch uh, pages. And I'm not sure whether they have distinct IP ranges, but you can always verify Googlebot by looking up its IP address and then doing sort of a forward and reverse lookup to verify that it is Googlebot. There is one interesting corner case, which is imagine if, say, Googlebot has just fetched a page mm -hmm. and then you are also an advertiser and so you've also bought a link, you know, in AdWords. Should AdSpot then go fetch that page immediately too? Right. And the answer is, well, that's kind of a lot of redundancy, you know, if you just fetch the page, you don't need to refetch it. And so we actually do have a crawling cache. And so when, for example, AdSpot fetches something as AdSpot, that page might get cached. And then if Googlebot wants to fetch that page, it might hit that cache and say, oh, five minutes ago, we already fetched that page. Okay. And so we don't, it doesn't matter as much to us whether it's AdSpot or Googlebot that fetched that page. If it's in that cache, then we say, ah, okay, I already just got a copy of that. Let's reuse it. Now that said, I think the, the volume of pages that Googlebot fetches is really big <laughs> compared to the volume of, of yeah, AdSpot okay. because there's like a, you know, we've seen 60 trillion URLs. So, um, so you're far more likely to see a fetch come from Googlebot than from AdSpot. But we try to advertise that clearly in the user agent so you can always do something depending on, you know, if it's, uh, you can tell that it's coming from Google basically. So it's a two different bot. It's, uh, it's two different user agents, okay. and it's two different mechanisms, like we usually don't even share all right. that much yeah. code with that the ads team, we're, they're in a different building, we're in a different building, um, but I think some of that infrastructure can be shared, so uh, not just the cache, but you know, you wouldn't want to write a completely different bot, you know, for, you know, um, a different sector of the company. So think of it more like it's a crawling service where one person can say to uh, to the Googlebot that's sort of trawling around on the web and say, hey, we need to fetch a copy of this page. And then we can surface that ability to other properties. But at, at all times, you need to be able to, well, at least certainly for the web crawl, you need to be able to tell that that's actually a Googlebot visiting. There's a few weird corner cases like when we check for cloaking, then we might you know, come from some different IPs, you know, because if you if you always know where Googlebot's coming from and you're doing something spammy or deceptive, then you could make for a bad user experience. So, you know, we, we, we do certainly have a few IPs where we can check for abuse or deception, you know, that's that's coming from a slightly different area. But for the vast majority of cases, you know, the, the billions and billions of URLs that we're crawling every day, um, that's well advertised, it's coming from a well-known IP address range. It normally doesn't change all that often, and we're always thinking about, you know, are there ways that we can advertise those IPs so that people can encode that and, and operate on that without too much trouble. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, you bet.